But the boundary running through on the 49th parallel was an artifact of, of the fact that the British had established a present, presence there as well. So on the Athabasca Pass then, what we've done here is, this is what we had in mind to try to work on to develop for the teachers. And we have a photograph of the Athabasca of the trail, the Grand Traverse, on which we'd identify some geographic features, and then we'd have a page of notes in there of the, of the history in there. So we've done that in the draft form right through to boat encampment, and I'm not going to do that tonight, but I will go through the pictures to give you an idea of the, of the trail. It's really uh, quite impressive to think about, and think about it too in terms of the women and kids traveling this trail as well by on broke horses and on foot and by canoe. So this is a is a part of the series of that we anticipated. We'd use a picture unmarked, and this is at the north end of Brule Lake, looking south to you see Rashmir at the far end. And we asked it, uh, some places in there. I think number one we think is probably where David Thompson camped on his way west, and two is probably where. Uh, the first Jasper House was located in there. And then we sketch in the trail to show where we think the trails went. And from here there were two, but the main one we think is the one that went off to the to the left. So on the way through here, well, I'll just show you this one one trail. So this is to, at the south end of Brule Lake, and you'll recognize Rashmiyad off in the <coughs> background there. I'm pretty sure it took the left and then they crossed the Fiddle River up towards the base of the mountains where the footing was better. <coughs> then this is looking through the gap that's uh, Benson Ridge on the right on point five. And you can see how the two trails go in. The one on the right on the north side went through a lot of Muskegee ground and through some very sharp rock ridges. So the preferred trail was the one on the left that kept to the base of the mountain, more or less where Highway 16 runs now, but if the water was high and it was hard to cross the river up there, then they would take the other one in there. So this moving towards Snake Indian River, that's rushed to Smet in the background and the Snake Indian River flows through where number three is. Number five is the uh, Bull Rosh or Rosh Rond with its uh, Indian headdress mm -hmm. configuration. And four is that first ridge that we cross on Highway 16 before getting to uh, Disaster Point. So here's a view over Syncline Ridge, and Disaster Point is where number two is. And at the, uh, I can show you in a moment, the, the, the river used to hit that point square on. So if the water was high, there was no option but to turn left up the ridge there and, and take that route that, uh, that Ross Cox had pioneered. And then the main trail, we think, crossed <clears throat> the fort of the Athabasca at that point and stayed on the north side, on the right-hand side, through there. Yeah, this is the, uh, this was a 1909 photograph when they were building the first railway through there, and that's disaster point on the right-hand side. You can still see that grade from the highway that's cut in there, but that rock face is what the river hit into, and you just couldn't get up and over that ridge without going all the way back behind it. And then the Rosh Ron you can see in the background there. <clears throat> so after, uh, it was 1835 roughly when when the fort was, the, the poetry, Jasper House was moved from the north end of Brule Lake to, to number two in there, which is just about across from where the uh, Rocky River comes in. It was better ground, it was, it was more uh, accessible and more room to spread out. So the trails from there mostly went on the right-hand side, on the north side of the river. The option was to cross and go where uh, Highway 16 is at the present time. So there was Jasper House in its shape as, uh, after it was abandoned <coughs> in uh, about 18, and this was 1872 when they were doing the first survey for the railway. And it's gone since. And here's Jasper Lake to illustrate that it's, you know, the, the, they traveled by water essentially to the head of Brule Lake when they were coming west 
But from there on, it was mostly horses because the river was so shallow uh, uh, through Brule Lake and through uh, Jasper Lake here. And uh, uh, so we'll just keep along here. The uh, So this is looking uh, through uh, number five is the beginning of the Henry House Flats, that grassland area where the landing strip is. Uh, two is the uh, Snaring River coming in, and four is the trail uh, uh, that the overlanders <clears throat> use. But the main one, we think, ran through one, two, and three in there to the parting of the brigades. Now, the brigades, we, we, <clears throat> we tend to think of our history as rather complacent, but there was a lot of hostility inherent among uh, between the fur trading companies themselves and because, uh, with some of the Aboriginal people in there as well. So the brigades tended to s travel together as, as, in as large a group as possible. So coming from Fort Edmonton, the, there would be two brigades usually come together, one of them heading through Yellowhead Pass to the New Caledonia, the other one through Athabasca Pass. And that they would part here, um, we think uh, uh, this is the uh, bridge to uh, over the Athabasca to Jasper Park Lodge and Lake Edith in here, and this is the road up to uh, Moline, Moline Canyon. So I think the parting of the brigades took place here. They forded the river on a long diagonal at that point. And then the, uh, the trail, yeah, there's Rosh, uh, <clears throat> uh, the, the Montagne de la Grande Traverse is uh, at number one. The idea here is to show how easy it was to ford the rivers at, at the time that they traveled. Because the brigades were timed so that the, the water was low in the Athabasca, the spring before heavy runoff and then the fall after uh, things had subsided. So once they were on the uh, south side of the river, it's interesting there's a bend here on this road to Jasper Park Lodge. The Bar Jasper Park Lodge is here and this is the golf course. So the old fur trade route took a bend right there, and I'm sure that that trail is still in evidence. You need a little imagination, but there's a low strip in the ground that looks like it's been traveled and worn and uh, just revegetated a little bit. There's a parking area right in there. If you just take a few steps off, you can go see for yourself. Just try to imagine those hundreds of horses that came over that period of 60 years of, of travel in there. So it bent around uh, here to and through the golf course and behind the O Fort Point. O Fort Point is three, and this is the ridge behind. And then just followed up through there, through the uh, through the prairies. And there's over six <clears throat> is uh, Mount Edith Cavell. We did a composite here. I'm crowding my luck here. To go to it's not. Uh, we did a composite of old Bridgeland photographs that showed how from uh, the parting of the brigades here, it came through the, the lodge and around the, the Old Fort Point and then down onto the Takara and then the Buffalo Prairies in here all the way up to the crossing of the Athabasca again to go up the Whirlpool. Uh, and this is it coming back down to the uh, Takara Creek. And to keep you oriented geographically, we're right across here from Jasper Park, or the, from the Miette from Marmot Basin Ski Hill, shown in number one. And uh, so it's, it's right down below that the, the trails went, and the five is the Buffalo Prairie, Prairie de la Vache. So Hector quickly was uh, of the Palliser expedition, it was uh, Palliser and Hector came out together and they split up to cover the ground. And Hector came up in January and uh, traveled with uh, Hudson Bay Factor, and he climbed a hill to look up the Whirlpool River. They didn't have time to go up it, but we think this is probably the viewpoint that Hector would have had looking at the Whirlpool. And we can sketch on here the, the trail that they followed uh, coming up here through the Buffalo Prairies and then through the bush and then crossing the Athabasca at that point. <clears throat> 